Hi everyone, I'm Sharon. Welcome to my channel, Sharon Soaps. I am recording today from Chile, Minnesota, my previous home state. We had an opportunity to visit family, and wouldn't you know it, got sick. Perhaps you can see it, hear it in my voice. So today for you on the sewing channel, I have a how-to. It's a super simple half apron. If you know someone that's a beginner sewer, this is a perfect project. If you wanna use up a yard of fabric, this is a perfect project. If you wanna whip up some gifts in 30 minutes, this is the perfect project. I'll go step by step on the video on how you need to create this. And really, after you get it down, if you've been sewing for some time, it takes 30 minutes or less. As I said, it's just a one yard apron. I like to use quilting cottons for my aprons. There's just so many choices available. You can find online choices or at your quilting shop, local quilting shop. I like to shop local whenever possible. I like to support local shop owners. You could use linen if you wanted to. You could use canvas if you wanted to. I just find quilting cottons they're fun they're easy to work with i would recommend pre-washing your fabric before you start sewing the apron if you're like me and you're a messy cooker cooker is an old word if you're a messy cook your apron's gonna get dirty and you're gonna be washing it a lot what you don't want to do is spend your time making this great little apron and then it shrinks in the wash on you so go grab some fabric and let's get started the supplies you will need to make this apron. One yard of fabric at least 44 inches wide, a straight edge ruler, optional, you could use a measuring tape, coordinating thread, removable fabric marker, scissors or a rotary cutting system, pins, and of course your sewing machine. The first thing we want to do with this apron project is make sure the fabric has a straight edge to it. So I have placed it right side down on my cutting surface, you know, because sometimes when you get fabric at the fabric start, it's not cut evenly straight across. I could tell just visually looking at what I have here that it was cut like this, which means when it was folded, they cut it at a little bit of an angle. So grab a straight edge ruler and a marking device. It could be a pencil, it could be a pen. These happen to be cool pens that are erasable with heat, or it could be chalk. This is a little roller one that I like a lot. This is what I'm gonna use. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your straight edge ruler and just mark that, just line it up evenly at the salvage edge. And I can tell, again, this dips so much in the center, they have to come up quite a bit. And it's even on the salvage edge. I'm gonna take my marker, hold that ruler in place so it doesn't move, and just mark a line. Just mark a line. When I get to the end, I'm just going to move my ruler over, and I'm going to make sure the line I just marked, my ruler is parallel to that, lined up nice. And I'm going to hold the ruler in place, and do another line. And I'm going to continue on to the end of the fabric. One more line ought to do it. Make sure we're even. There we go. I now have a line marked on the wrong side of the fabric and I'm going to cut across that before we get started with the apron project. You could use scissors or you could use a rotary cutter, whichever is your preference. Once you've cut that edge straight, you're gonna to wanna to remove the salvage. The salvage is that white edge. It's usually white on the edge of your fabric. We're gonna go ahead and cut that off also because we don't want that in our apron and we're not going to use it for any of the pieces that we are measuring and cutting. Again, you can just cut it with your scissor right along where the salvage meets the design of the fabric, or you can use a rotary cutter and a mat. Don't forget to use your self-healing mat if you use that rotary cutter. Very important. All right, so the salvage edge is gone. Gone, we don't need that. Now that you have the salvage edge cut off and the bottom edge straightened out, we're gonna go ahead and mark the rectangles that we're going to cut to make the apron. So the first piece we're gonna mark is going to be 20 inches by 32 inches. 32 inches is what's gonna go around our body, 20 inches is the length of the apron. 
on. So if you don't have a straight edge ruler, this works just fine too. I'm gonna to start by starting in this corner, just marking this major earth in the corner, coming over 32 inches. I'm gonna use my chalk, and use whatever you like to use to mark, and I'm just gonna make a little mark, okay? And then I'm going to go up 20 inches. This happens to be 18 inches, so I'm just gonna put along the edge here. This is 18 inches, just gonna hold a mark right there, go up another two inches, make a mark, okay? And then I'm gonna come over here, where I made that mark for 32 inches. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make sure the edge of the ruler is parallel, matches up with the line we cut. I've got 18 inches, go up another two, and I've got my 20 inches. And then in the center, same thing, just wanna make sure I've got, got my 18, go up another two, got my 20 inches. Gonna connect those lines. Just place it here and mark them. Now it doesn't matter what you're using to mark this with because all of these lines that we are marking, and I wanna come down and draw this one also. All of these lines that are being marked will either be enclosed in the hem of the apron or in the seam of the apron. You shouldn't have to be too concerned if it's not removable. It's better if it's removable, but for this case, you're okay. Next rectangle we're gonna make is gonna be four inches by 32 inches. That's gonna be a waistband. It's 32 inches because it's gonna be equal to the size of the apron. So I'm gonna go from the line, the top of the rectangle from the apron and mark four inches right here. I'm just gonna do that in a couple places. Four inches, four inches, four inches, and four inches. I know that I want 32 inches, so I'm just gonna Continue that line that I made for the apron. And then I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna connect those marks that I just made. Just draw them in. You don't have to be very dark, just enough that you can see to cut. Uh, the next one, we're doing two ties. They're gonna be also four inches because it's gonna to connect to the waistband. And these are gonna be 36 inches long. You can certainly make them longer if you want to. The width of this fabric is probably about 42 inches from salvage to salvage. Actually, this one is 43 and a half. You could make them that long if you wish. I'm just going 36 inches, so I'm just taking my tape measure and I'm coming out here. I'm got it lined up on that last, the top of the rectangle for the waistband that we just drew. Just gonna make a line for 36 inches right there. I'm gonna go ahead and extend the line I just drew for the waistband out to meet the 36 inches. Then on the top of the waistband line, I'm just measuring up another four inches, just like we did before. Four inches, four inches, four inches, four inches, four inches. And then we're just gonna connect those lines like we did before. Again, you just need it marked enough that you can see it to cut. And I'm going to do the very same thing. We're just going to do one, one more waist tie because you need two waist ties. And this is why you need a yard of fabric. Just, you're going to have about maybe four inches left, three, four inches left, depending on how accurate your fabric was cut and how much you had to use or get rid of as you straightened it. And we're going up to that 36 inches. So we're just doing 36 inches by four inches. Go ahead and connect that so you can cut, so you can see what you're cutting. Oops, let's see. Oh, there we go, lined up, lined up, lined up. There we go. Okay, you now should have one large rectangle, smaller rectangle, two ties. Apron, waistband, two ties. Let's cut them out. Once you're done cutting out all of your pieces, make sure that you have them laying so that the direction of the pattern is the way you want it. Little tip, go ahead and mark an arrow with your chalk 
It doesn't matter what you mark it with. Just mark an arrow that shows the direction of the fabric because what you don't want to do is accidentally start putting this together. There's my arrows. I just put a little light arrow on all four pieces. What you don't want to do is accidentally start sewing this together with part of it upside down. You have cut out all your rectangles. You've marked the direction of your fabric. Now you're going to press under on the apron part to make the hem. To start with, let's go ahead and remove the waistband and the two ties. We don't need to work with them right now. Just gonna set them over here. And you're just gonna press, make sure again, this is the top of my apron. That's where the waistband's gonna go. This is the bottom of my apron. This is where I want my hem. I'm gonna press under one quarter inch. Whatever you need to measure, I love this little handy dandy slider type ruler. So I've just got it at a quarter inch. I just measure it as I go along. I've got this little iron, it's got that little steam. Isn't this fabulous? So I've already measured this one out and pressed it. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on each side. Each side of the apron, quarter inch. Once you measure one, you can put that away and keep measuring if you wish. Although you will get to the point where you can pretty well eyeball it. You can pretty much tell what's quarter inch. So we're just gonna press, get a little bit of steam. The nice thing about these quilting cottons, a little bit of steam holds that shape really well. Let's go over here. I just love the little yellow on that. So cheery, so cheery. Okay, I want to press a quarter inch on the other side. I'm just going to measure, make sure I've got a quarter inch. Yes, that is indeed a quarter inch. When you're using steam, please be careful to get your fingers out of the way. Even this little thing can get hot as I'm measuring. So just be conscious of that when you are pressing. And you do want to press. It's going to be a lot easier for you. Okay, there we go. All I'm doing is I'm taking that quarter inch that I just did and I'm folding it out one more time. I'm just folding it to make it a double hem, basically. Taking that quarter inch we just folded that has the raw edge is gonna be tucked inside. When we fold it again, just fold it over. Very carefully steam it in place. Oh, I gotta tell you, this little iron really makes it easy. Ironing is what's going to make your apron look much more professional. Okay. Yep, we got some good steam there. Going to do both at sides again. Again, I'm just folding it over. And I'm going to steam that. And we're just steaming that in place. Got to do that other side also. Okay, just folding over that one quarter inch that we already folded previously and closing the raw edge all the way down to the corner, which is the bottom of our apron. Keep your fingers out of the way or you will get burned. Okay, that's enough steam to set that. Place that here. Now we've got all edges pressed under. We did it the right way. So our pattern is going the direction we want. Now we're going to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch that in place. Okay, we're at the sewing machine and we're just going to stitch that hem. We're just going to stitch very close to that fold. Remember, we did a double fold here. We're just gonna place our presser foot right there and start stitching. It's just a nice straight stitch all the way down. Just continue stitching. If your machine has a needle down position, you can use that. I'm gonna go ahead and use that. My machine is a Fox 2056 and it does have that feature. Okay, slow down once you get to that corner. We're just gonna go slow, and then we're going to lift the presser foot, and we're going to turn the fabric. And keep stitching. I'll show you what to do if you do not have 
that automatic put down or automatic needle down on your sewing machine. Okay, this is the bottom where you're stitching a nice straight line, continuing on. Just stitch, stitch, stitch. I'm kind of using my presser foot as a guide. You can use that as a guide or this bowl that we made. Okay, so I'm gonna take my needle down option off so you can see what to do when you get to the edge. Okay, continue on. Slow it down when you get to this edge. If it helps, you can use a pin to pin that corner in place. Just slow, 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 slow. Okay, slow, slow, slow. I think I want to go one more. And then I just want to end with the needle in the fabric. I'm going to turn my, put my presser foot up, turn my fabric. Removing that pin, putting the presser foot down and continuing on. Continuing on. We're almost done. And we are done. We're at the end. Trim your thread off. And there is your lovely little hem. Now it's time to connect the waist ties to the waistband. Remember, the waistband is the smaller piece at 32 inches, and the waist ties are the ones we cut at 36 inches. Verify that your pieces are the right way. I just laid one down the wrong way. That's where those little arrows you put on there will help you. You want to make sure if you've got a one-way design that you're putting this together correctly. So you're going to take the waistband piece and place it right side up on your cutting board. You're going to take one tie and you're going to match the shorter edge to the shorter edge of the waistband, right sides together. So we're just going to match that together. And then we're going to take a couple pins and just pin it in place. And then again, we're going to move that out of the way. And then we're going to take our other waist high. We're going to match short ends together, matching that raw edge together. And you're going to pin that in place also. And we're going to stitch that in a one half inch seam. And that will line up really nicely with our apron. So you can see here, I've got it pinned. Pinned. Shorter one is the waistband. We're going to take that to the sewing machine and stitch those little seams. We're now ready to stitch the waistband to the ties. We're doing it in a half inch seam. Go ahead and line up the raw edge of this fabric with your one half inch mark on your sewing machine. Go ahead and put your presser foot down. Please don't sew over your pins. I know some people do. I don't think personally it's a good habit. Go forward and back stitch. We wanna lock the thread. We wanna lock the stitches on this. So continue on, go ahead and remove your pin all the way, half inch, continue, continue, continue. Keep going, back stitch at the very end. Go ahead and trim the thread and stitch your other seam that you pinned in place. Match up your raw edges to that half inch mark on your sewing machine. Back stitch to lock your stitches. Continue on half inch. Lock your stitches at the end and go ahead and go ahead and trim the thread off of all of them. And what we're going to do now is you're going to go press this open with the iron and we're going to press in. Now that we've stitched the waistband to the ties. We're going to take that little half inch seam that we just stitched and we're going to press it open. You can certainly just finger press it if you wish. I'm going to use just a little bit of steam. And I'm going to press both of them. And 
and you can see that we did indeed stitch them together with the right sides facing on our pattern. Now we're going to attach the waistband and ties to the body of the apron. The first thing we need to do is find the center of the apron and the waistband. Just simply take your apron, piece of fabric, fold it in half so those edges that you just hemmed meet, and take a pin and just place a pin right there at that fold and unfold it. You can also use a marking pen to mark it if you want. Just make sure you mark it on the wrong side of the fabric. Okay, we've marked the center of the apron. Let's do the same with the waistband and ties. So I'm just gonna fold it in half, right sides together. I am matching up those seams that we just did. And let's see, there we go. Okay, that's matched up. What I wanna do now is again, place a pin right here where that center is and unfold it. I now have both the center of the waistband marked and the center of the apron marked. Now that you have marked the center of the apron and the waistband, we're gonna attach the two. First thing you're going to do is take that apron piece and turn it upside down. You want the wrong side of the fabric facing you. The next thing you're going to do is if you have a one-way design that we talked about earlier, you wanna flip your waistband so that the one-way design is upside down, meaning that one-way design or that arrow you marked on the fabric is facing you. Next, you're going to take the waistband and place the right side of the fabric against the wrong side of the apron. Go ahead and match up that center pin and start placing some pins. You are also matching the raw edges, this raw edge right there. Match that up. Let's place some pins in it to hold it in place because we're gonna stitch that. Just continue pinning. Use as many pins as you need. Okay, go ahead and remove the center pin of your apron and your waistband. Once you have a few pins holding it securely in place, I'm going to pin this half of it also. I want the entire top of the waistband and top of the apron. That is a bad pin. We're gonna to toss that one that's not sharp. Don't you hate it when that happens? And one more. All right, set that aside. And then you will see I have the top edge pinned together. Let's take it to the sewing machine and stitch that seam. We're now at our machine and we're going to stitch this in a half inch seam. I've got the fabric lined up right at my half inch mark on the sewing machine. So go ahead and start stitching. Do a little back stitch to lock those stitches and continue on. We're just gonna continue one half inch all the way, connecting the waistband to the apron. And it's gonna be really slick because then we're gonna do some pressing and you're not going to have any raw edges at all. Just continue on, half inch. Take your time, take your time so you have a nice straight stitch, nice even stitch. Remember to move those pins when you get close to the pins, don't, please don't sew over them. And we are almost at the end. Once you get to the end, you're gonna back stitch again to lock those stitches. And done, go ahead and trim your thread. And now, we're going to the ironing board to finish the waistband and ties. The next step is to iron the waistband and the ties. We've got ironing board and a iron with steam. And we're simply going to take that seam that we just stitched, connecting the waistband to the apron. We're gonna press that seam up. So the apron is going up towards the waistband. We're just gonna press. Give a little bit of steam. Steam is so great on these quilting cottons. Helps 
set it. I'm going to move this iron down here. I need a little more ironing surface and press that all the way. So what I've done is that seam is pressed up towards the waistband. Now here comes the slick part. What you're going to do is basically continuing pressing one half inch up. Use a little ruler or seam gauge, whatever works for you. I'm going to take and press up one half inch on the tie. So I'm continuing all the way to the end. You can measure or you can eyeball it. Again, once you've done this a few times, you'll get pretty good about judging the width of your, your seam. Half inches right there. Half inches right there. Get a little seam to set it. Now I'm very gently, very, very small little lift. I'm not going back and forth on the fabric. I'm actually pressing down. And half an inch here. The top of the that we've just pressed one edge, the other long edge, we're going to do the same thing. Gonna measure one half inch. I'm gonna press that in place all the way back to the body of the apron. This little, this little Aliso, Aloso, not 100% sure I should find out how to pronounce that for you. I just purchased it about a month ago. I'm really liking it. It's a great little tool to have in your sewing room. Perfect for crafts, perfect for small ironing. And this little ironing board, I probably picked up at Target or at one of those places. So I'm just continuing to press one half inch on the top of the waistband. Continue on. So you get the idea. You're going to do that all the way along all the long edges of the waistband. Press under one half inch. At the ends, you also want to press under one half inch. Let's measure that out. That looks pretty good. Go ahead and use a little steam to set that. Okay. So we will continue pressing the rest of this. Now that you have pressed one half inch into the wrong side of the waistband and the ties, we're gonna get ready for the final step. We're gonna take that waistband and fold it over. Wrong sides are gonna be inside, fold it over, just past that seam that you made attaching the apron to the waistband. That's going to end up being about one and a quarter inches. You do that all the way along that seam and give it a little bit of a steam, a little bit of a press just to help hold it in place. And just verify that it's even all the way. And once you get to the end of the apron, you are simply going to continue folding that over. You're going to fold it over in your edges that you fold it in. You're gonna match those up. You're gonna match them, get a little bit of steam to hold it in place. And this should also measure about one and a quarter inches. Just if it's a little off, it's fine. The main thing is you want those edges Folded edges to match. Continue, continue, continue. Give it some steam. All the way to the end of the tie. Make sure those ends that you folded in are still inside. 
gives you a nice completed finish to your pie. And make sure you do it on both sides. Continuing on to make sure both ties are pressed. Nice crisp look. Seriously, this is so easy. You don't have to turn anything right to out. All your raw edges are enclosed. Just very easy, very quick. You are almost done making this apron. Continue pressing. Again, make sure that edge is inside and those folded edges are matching. Everything is pressed. We're gonna to go top stitch this at the sewing machine. If you are more comfortable doing that with pins, go ahead and place pins right now along the edge. Those edges that you just matched up and you pressed, go ahead and place some pins in there. Continue, continue. Again, as many pins as you need, as many as you want. The more you sew these, the more comfortable you will become and you will get to a point where you don't even pin it. It will stay in place and you will feel confident that what you just pressed is gonna be enough of a guideline for you. Pin the waistband to the apron as I'm doing here. Just continuing on. Oh, this is cool. My pin colors actually match the colors in my apron. That's pretty fun. And we are pinned. We're going back to the machine to finish the apron. We're now at the machine because we're gonna to top stitch around every edge of the waist tie and the waistband, which is the final step. We're gonna to top stitch at about three a seven inch from the edge. You can measure if you want to. I simply use my presser foot as a guideline. And let's get started. So we're just going to continue. I like to start about two inches in from the edge of one tie. You'll notice I am not pulling the fabric. I'm just simply guiding it. Once you get close to the edge for that, that very bottom of the tie, slow down your stitches, slow, slow, slow. Put the presser foot down, the needle down, press your foot up and turn. We're going to continue top stitching along the upper edge of the ties in the waistband.
Once you get, once. Remember to slow down once you get your close to that edge. Needle down, press your foot up and turn. Continue stitching, slow. Needle down, press your foot up and turn. And we are almost done. I'm going to connect where we started and go ahead and back stitch just to lock the stitches. And you're done. You are done. Go ahead and cut any loose threads you may have on the apron. And you are now done. We're going to go admire it. If you enjoyed the sewing tutorial, be sure to like this video and be sure to subscribe so you'll know when other videos are posted.